organs, etc. Might we not still be, as it were, plastic at the edges? Might we not still be uh, developing and evolving. changing and genuinely evolving, if only on the margin? Well, I think one has to be, again, very cautious here, because while it's true at a very, in, a, in a very vague sense, to say it's correct to say that the systems that we now have have developed through evolution, through natural selection, it's important to recognize how little we are saying when we say that. Uh, for example, it is certainly not necessarily the case that every particular trait that we have uh, is the result of specific selection. That is, that we were selected for having that trait. In fact, there are striking examples to the contrary, or at least apparent examples to the contrary. Say, take, for example, our capacity to deal with abstract properties of the number system. Now, that's a distinctive human capacity, as distinctive as the capacity for language. Uh, any normal human, in fact, down to pathological levels, can comprehend the properties of the number system and can move very far in understanding their deep properties. Uh, but it's extremely difficult to believe that this capacity was the result of specific selection. That is, it's hard to believe that people who were a little better at proving theorems of number theory had more children, let's say. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, through most of human evolution, in fact, essentially all of human evolution, this capacity was, it would have been impossible to know that this capacity even existed. The contingencies that allowed it to be exercised never arose. Nevertheless, the trait is there. The capacity is there. The mental organ, if you like, has developed. Presumably, it has developed as a concomitant of some other properties of the brain which may have been selected. For example, we can speculate, say, that, you know, that, that increase in brain size uh, uh, was a factor in differential reproduction, hence in evolution. And it may be that for physical law, because of physical laws that we presently don't know, that an increase in brain size uh, under the specific conditions of human evolution simply leads necessarily to a system which has the capacity to deal with properties of the number system. Well, then that's a matter of physics, ultimately. Uh, and then the mind that evolves, the brain that evolves, will have this capacity, but not because it was achieved through selection. Now, I think it's, it's at least likely that something of the sort is true of human language. And, I mean, surely if, if it were dysfunctional, it wouldn't have been maintained. It's obviously functional. Uh, but it's a long leap to claim that, uh, that the specific structures of language are themselves the result of specific selection. And yeah. it's a leap that I don't think is particularly plausible. What you say, though, about the limitations